Hi everybody! This week, by popular vote on my Patreon page, I'm going to be reviewing this extreme waist cincher made by Dracula Clothing. So here's the front, the side, the back, and the other side. So for the length and fit of this corset, the center front here is 8 inches, the princess seam is 7 inches, and 3 inches are from the waist up, while 4 inches are from the waist down. At the side seam here, it's 8 inches again because it comes down a little bit lower. Actually, on the side seam, it does uh, cover slightly my iliac crest. And in the center back, it's a little bit shorter again at 7.5 inches. And for the circumferential measurements, this is a size 22, and uh, when I measured it right out of the package, the waist did measure 22 inches, so it is true to size. The rib cage here, which I can't call the underbus measurement, it's more of the low rib to me, is uh, 25 inches, so it has a 3 inch rib spring. And the high hip here measured 30 inches, so it has an 8 inch high hip spring. I have to tell you, my choice in blouse today is deliberate. It's a little bit more loose fitting so that it hides some of this bulge, some of the sausage or muffin top that's happening above the corset. If I were wearing a bit of a tighter shirt today, you would be able to see a lot of rolls. Now, the rolls are natural. Anybody can get them. It doesn't matter what size you are. Uh, but it is just kind of a common truth that many cinchers, if you have a longer torso especially, and you have a lot of space between the top of the corset and where your bra starts, you are in all likelihood going to experience some overspill. But uh, the more room that the cincher has in the ribs, the less displacement and pushing up will happen. And so if this corset had a little bit more room in the ribs, then uh, it might have a little bit less of that squidge happening. The corset is actually slightly contoured at the top edge here, so where you imagine a longer underbust corset where it comes up a little bit higher and it kind of contours under the breast and it kind of comes up into a point, a similar thing is happening uh, on the top edge of this corset here, uh, where it, it is kind of creating that, that similar contour. But because there's at least three inches or so between uh, the top of this corset and when my underwire actually starts, um, it looks a little bit odd to me, but it kind of follows along the shape of my rib cage a little bit. So it's pulling in my floating ribs a tiny bit, but it's leaving my other ribs kind of over the top of the corset. So it feels a little bit awkward. It takes some getting used to, and that is another reason why I'm wearing this corset with uh, a V-shaped gap in the back with a little bit more room in the ribs because even though my ribs are capable of being pulled in tighter, um, just because it is such a low corset, it starts so low on my ribs, it would feel really strange to have my rib cage kind of rubbing against the top edge of this corset, so I would rather just stay comfortable. And with the bottom of this corset, it's cut more or less straight across. And you can see that stylistically, they've decided to make it a little bit longer over the hip. That's why the, the side measurement, the side seam is a little bit longer than the princess seam or the back, because they wanted it to come a little bit over the hip. But what this means is um, the side is actually covering and uh, touching my hip bones. Now, in a different style of waspy or cincher, if it's cut high over the hip so that it's not interfering with my hip bones at all, I can lace that type of corset a little bit smaller. But because this one runs over the hip, it's actually uh, overlapping with my hip bone very slightly on the side here, and the steel bones run that long as well, uh, it means that I cannot physically bring the corset in any smaller. Otherwise, it's going to pinch or press on delicate blood vessels or nerves in this area, and I don't want that to happen. That's not healthy. So so even though stylistically, uh, it coming over the, the side of the hip looks interesting and cute and pretty unique as far as cinchers go, it means that you might not be able to lace quite as tightly in this style. I hope the silhouette is coming out on camera. Uh, it's a very U-shaped silhouette. It's very smooth, concave. There's no um, real demarcation where exactly the waist is. Uh, you just kind of have to go by the, the smallest point here. It doesn't kind of go in a geometric shape. 
So from that uh, and from the actual shape of each individual panel, I'm guessing that this corset was um, the pattern had come from a longer corset and they decided to cut it down and make a cincher version of it as opposed to starting from scratch making uh, a specific corset that's designed to be a cincher. So let's go to the tabletop portion of this review and I can show you the other details of this corset close up. Okay, so here is the extreme waist cincher laid flat and for the materials, uh, the fashion fabric that I chose was this gray dragon scale and this is actually a satin, it's a printed satin. Uh, they have, I think, 23 different styles of uh, extreme waist cincher. So you can choose between cotton, satin, uh, a bunch of different uh, colors and prints. Uh, and the uh, strength fabric, the lining on the inside is black cotton twill. And this is what the Dracula clothing label looks like. So it's just their logo. Um, it's It doesn't have any cleaning instructions and uh, no information about the fibers on here. And there's the size. Turning on its side, this is a six panel pattern. So 12 panels for both sides. You can see panels one, two, three make the front, four, five, six make the back. And as per usual, uh, most of the curve comes between panels three and four here. And this was constructed using the welt seam method, so it looks finished on both outside and inside. Uh, both layers of the corset were assembled at the same time, panel by panel, uh, from panels one all the way to uh, panel six here at the back. And turning to the inside, you can see that there is a one inch wide waist tape. It's a partial waist tape, so it starts between panels one and two, and it ends between panels five and six here and it's made from black grow grain ribbon. It slants slightly downward towards the front of the corset, which I have seen in some other brands. So as long as this is done consistently and deliberately, this is just a feature, a different way of doing the waist tape, not necessarily a flaw. And the binding in this corset is commercially purchased black satin bias binding, machine stitched on both outside and on the inside here. So you can see there's a larger top stitch in the back here, or on the underside. And uh, there are no garter tabs in this corset. The modesty panel in this corset is about five and a half inches wide, so I would say about uh, four inches of usable space once you uh, subtract this little part here. Um, one thing that I did notice was that the modesty panel was kind of um, the fashion fabric is upside down, but it, that's like a small thing. I'm not kind of, you know, going crazy over that sort of thing, but it is one thing to kind of note. Um, it is unstiffened, uh, finished in matching fashion fabric and the same black cotton lining, and it is attached to one side of the corset. So if you do want to remove it, uh, you can absolutely. And there's also a modesty placket extending from the knob side of the busk here in the front. It is unstiffened and finished in the same matching dragon scale satin here. The busk in this corset is six and a half inches long and it has three loops and pins equidistantly spaced. It's a standard width busk, so it's half an inch on each side and it's a little bit stiffer than what I'm used to getting from a standard width busk, but it might be just because this busk is so short. This cincher has a total of 24 bones, 12 on each side, not including the center front busk here. So it's double bone on the seams, two, four, six, eight, ten. These are all quarter inch wide spirals. And you can see that they very plainly attract my magnet here. And in the back, it's sandwiched by two uh, quarter inch wide flat steel bones, which also attract my magnet. There are a total of 16 grommets in the back of this corset, eight on each side because this cincher is so short in the back. Uh, they are set pretty much equidistantly spaced. They are sized double zero with a small to medium flange around them and finished in silver. They look like my uh, size double zero grommets that I got from my C-Step 2 machine. And here's the underside of the grommets, nice big washers. They're all holding in pretty well and uh, they seem to have rolled pretty nicely. They don't catch on the laces, so they're doing their job. And the laces in the back are your standard workhorse. They're your quarter inch wide, black, flat, uh, nylon shoelace. It's long enough for my purposes. Uh, of course, this this uh, cincher is very short. Um, the one thing that I did want to point out was that the bunny ears were put in 
really, really high. Uh, <laughs> I, I really wanted to put the, the bunny ears down here, or actually even down here would be most comfortable for me because I have a low waist. But um, I decided to keep it this way as I was breaking in this corset, just so you could see um, how high the bunny ears came uh, when I first received it in the mail. So if your cincher comes and the bunny ears are super high on the waist, I guess that's pretty standard. This corset is available in waist sizes from 18 inches up to 38 inches and it is 57 euros on the Dracula clothing website which converts to about $67 US. Dracula Clothing has free worldwide shipping and it is uh, shipped from the Netherlands. The tracking number doesn't work quite so well and it took about three and a half, almost four weeks to reach me here in Canada. Uh, but that said, I was not charged any duty for this package. So you win some, you lose some. Uh, so if you are planning on getting anything from Dracula Clothing, make sure that you have well enough time before any sort of uh, special event just to make sure that it arrives on time. As mentioned previously, this corset was not only funded by my supporters on Patreon, but they actually voted and this was the top uh, voted corset that they wanted me to review. So if you are interested in learning how my Patreon works and you want to vote on what courses I review in the future, feel free to check out my Patreon page in the cards above or down in the description below. And this concludes my review of the Extreme Waist Cincher from Dracula Clothing. I hope you enjoyed it and you learned something new. If you did, please remember to click that like button down there as it helps support this channel. And if you have any comments or questions about this corset, feel free to leave a comment down below. I'd be happy to get back to you. If you tried this corset or any other Extreme Waist corset from Dracula Clothing, let us know what you think of it in a comment down below as well, because I'm sure many of us would be curious to know your thoughts as well. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you all in the next video.